session four of the book of Leviticus. And today I want to ask you to take your own time and read through the whole Leviticus 4. We've uh, talked about Leviticus 1, 2 and 3 this far, and I trust that you read at your own time the rest of the verses in the chapter that we don't discuss. So let's start with Leviticus 4 verse 2. Today is going, um, the discussion is about ignorance. Um, to say that, but I didn't know. A lot of people might say on Judgment Day, but I didn't know that I was supposed to live according to your instructions. How will that be handled? How, how is God a fair judge and a good judge at the end of the day? At the end of Judgment Day, when a lot of people might have this excuse, but I didn't know. And that is the word ignorance. Ignorance is when you, when you are not aware of something. So the normal definition of the word ignorance is a lack of knowledge and information. So ignorance basically is about not knowing and not having information. The word ignorant is an adjective that describes a person in the state of being unaware. But it can also describe a person in a state of cognitive dissonance. A cognitive dissonance, very difficult word, it sounds strange, but and uh, I'm, I'm not being sarcastic, but cognitive dis dissonance is when you, when you make a choice not to um, be aware of the information or the knowledge. So sometimes um, when you start to speak to people and they say, I don't want to hear it. I don't, I don't want to, I don't even want to know about any of this. That is cognitive dissonance. Or when... Um, Rob Skiba likes to use this word when he talks about the biblical cosmology. Most people have been brainwashed all their lives about the um, um, the cosmology, um, the, the heliocentric model. I don't, I don't want to go into too much detail of that. But when scientific experiences are being done, that proves the opposite. Then these people say, um, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't fit into my um, belief. It, it doesn't fit into my brain. I, I can't handle this. Don't give me any more information. And that's cognitive dissonance. And we find that a, a lot with people hearing about the Torah as well. Um, the Torah is only for the Jews. No, it's not. It's for the people of God that he brought out of Egypt and he's teaching them how to live and be holy and he's protecting them with all his laws. They mustn't sleep around. He's protecting them against heartache and AIDS and all those things. His, his laws are beautiful. No, no, no. It's only for the Jews. That is cognitive dissonance. So it's a, uh, another word for ignorance. So ignorance can be that you really have a lack of knowledge and information. But ignorance can also be that I just don't want to know. Just I know what I know. Don't confuse me. I don't want to hear about your knowledge or your information. If you Google ignorance and you ask for similar and opposite words, um, similar words is incomprehension, unawareness, unconsciousness, inexperience, innocence, unenlightenment, but also stupidity, foolishness, idiotcy, to be dopey, dopiness, thickness. Their, their skull is so thick, the information just cannot, cannot go through. They, there's a wall that they've built around them. That's cognitive dissonance. They build a wall around them, and then one day they might plead ignorance. We all know the saying that goes, ignorance is bliss. Especially if we look around what we are facing in 2021. The whole agenda 2021 of the New World Order is being played out in your own house, in your school, around you. Everybody is following this agenda 2021 that the New World Order is bringing along. And they believe the narrative that the mass media is pushing down their throats. That is cognitive dissonance. The moment you tell them, listen, do you really think that you are safe? by breathing your own carbon dioxide the whole day and wearing a damp piece of fabric that, that's full of dust and, and uh, um, it, it gathers bacteria and it's damp the whole day because of your breathing. 
Do you really think that is safe? Do you think that's going to stop the attack of the <laughs> pandemic? The uh, microfibers are, um, are small, but not small enough. The holes in that piece of fabric that you're wearing over your face is not small enough to um, protect you from the actual body of the pandemic. The virus itself is 0 0.006 small, but the, the, the holes inside the fabric is 0 0.6. So there's almost space for 10 or 20 of the viruses to come through one little hole. So is this really the, the problem that we are facing? And is this the solution that they're giving? Or is this just a whole plan they're busy with to get everybody to do exactly what they say so that they can get their plan in place? What is the plan? To inject you with stuff that they want to inject you with. Whether that stuff has been tested or proven today if you look at the statistics how many people are okay i'm not going to go into that but the the problem is that's cognitive dissonance when you start to talk to people about the problem that we are facing and how what the long-term plan of this problem is that was created and the solution that they are now giving for this problem the solution is only just to serve their agenda Eventually, they want to microchip everybody. So it's just an easy process to start with wearing that thing over your mouth the whole day, taking the stuff that we want to inject into you, and the next thing is to take the microchip. So people say, I don't want to hear about it. Um, I don't believe you. You are just um, theorizing, and you, you believe in conspiracies, and you're stupid, and you're unscientific, and you're a, you're a fool. I'm not foolish. I'm following science. So um, I don't want to go off trail, but you understand what I'm saying. That is when people don't want to hear a, another side as well. They don't want to look at scientific research on both sides. They only want to hear the scientific research on their side. All right. So that is also ignorance and and genuine ignorance at the end of the day we are now going to discuss in the book of leviticus god knows when people are genuinely unaware of the facts but when people are rejecting the facts that's also ignorance ignorance is bliss oh i didn't know so therefore i'm safe oh i didn't know about this so i can blissfully go on with my life i don't want to get out of my comfort zone and i want to be um, safe on the day of judgment because I didn't know. Therefore, it doesn't matter. So that's basically what, what this word ignorance is all about. So let's discuss this out of a biblical point of view. Leviticus 4 verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of Yahuwah, all right, so the whole chapter 4 is about when an individual does something against the Torah in ignorance. If a soul sin through ignorance against the Torah, or the whole nation of Israel is in ignorance against the law, or a priest, or common people, or even Gentiles, those who don't even know the Torah, when they sin in ignorance because they didn't know. We are going to discuss this today. Um, but the Bible continues that when you, especially talking to Israel, Israel in verse 2, speaking to the children of Israel to say, If a soul sin through ignorance against the Torah, concerning things which ought not to be done, and they shall do those things, all right? There will come a moment when they do realize that they have sinned. The moment somebody explains to them, that they have sinned, that this is against the law of God, or the moment um, they read it in the Bible. But if there's a moment that comes when they realize they have transgressed the law, when they transgressed it, it was in ignorance. But when they realize the transgression, right? Leviticus 4.28 If he sins that which he has sinned, if it comes to his knowledge. All right. So this is what the whole chapter 4 is about. Sinning in ignorance and then realizing that you have sinned. The transgression then comes to your knowledge. 
then the same sacrifice counts. The same rules in Torah counts. The same repentance and blood and the same turning away from that sin counts. We've discussed repentance and the sinner's prayer and how um, forgiveness takes place in the Old Testament and how it never changed to the New Testament. So even when you do sin in ignorance or you sin and it comes to your knowledge that you've sinned, the whole procedure is exactly the same. You repent of it, it comes under the blood, and then you turn away from it and you stop doing it. God is not unfair. Neither can anyone accuse God of being like a bloodthirsty judge one day um, when he judges people that has not repented. Because God explains to us how ignorance is being handled. And God gives everyone a chance to, to hear about the truth. If, if somebody doesn't know about the truth, God also has, a, has an answer about that. Um, and it's not just so easy. We'll see. We, we're going to get to what Paul explains to us and helps us to understand here. It's not so easy to just say you didn't know or you can't be judged because you never knew about Yeshua or the Torah. It's not going to be so easy one day because there's a reason for that. Anyway, let's continue. Ezekiel 3 verse 18. When I say unto the wicked, you shall surely die, and you, give him a wa- and you don't give him a warning, you don't speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. Then that wicked man will die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require from you. So God is speaking here to me and you, like he was speaking to the prophet Ezekiel. And he said to Ezekiel, But if you warn the wicked person, and they do not turn away from their wickedness. Okay, this is the definition of ignorance, cognitive dissonance. When you warn them, or they come, the, the, the knowledge comes to them about their sin, or about their um, lack of knowledge, and they don't turn away from their evil ways, then they will die in their sin. But you will have saved yourself, and their blood will not be on your hands. Right, ignorance is unfortunately not going to be a good enough excuse on Judgment Day. Ignorance in Hebrew, H. Strong's um, 7684, Shagah, Shagah, Shagah. And in Hebrew, the definition is a mistake in inadvertent transgression, an error to be unaware, to be unwittingly sinning. Okay, you understand that now? So, so shegaga is when you, in error or in ignorance or in unawareness, make a mistake and sin against God. It's a gaga thing to be ignorant of the Holy God of the Bible and His requirements for His called out ones. It's gaga. It's not, it's not preached every Sunday from the pulpit. So it's gaga. It's not nice. Why isn't this preached? Why will millions and millions and billions of people be ignorant? Because where must they get the knowledge? Doesn't Yahweh say my people perish for a lack of knowledge? Nobody preaches this truth. Well, very few people pre- uh, preach it, especially in the mainstream religion. So most people are going to be in a chacha situation because they are ignorant, unaware. They don't know. It's a gaga thing for anyone to hear God calling and ignore it. So it's, first of all, it's, it's a gaga thing not to know. But secondly, it's even more gaga to hear and ignore it. Ignorance and ignor- to ignore something and to be ignorant, it's, it's a word that's very close to one another. Ignorance and ignoring. Do you hear them? So a lot of people are just ignoring the facts and the truth and they're rejecting it and unfortunately they're going to claim ignorance one day. Ignorance in Greek is the G50 in, in the Strongs and it's ach nehu, ach, ach nohehu, <laughs> ach nohehu in Greek. So it's not to know through lack of information or intelligence. By implication it's to ignore through disinclination, I'm not inclined, I, I, I'm not interested. 
To be ignorant is to have the unknown over you. Okay, but the one that is sinning in ignorance because he just really did not know that, for instance, that piece of bacon that he's eating during his Christmas celebration in church on the day of the sun while everyone else, including the pastor, is doing all that with him or is eating ham during Ishtar or even, you know, how, how must he know? How must he know that these are pagan traditions that is against the Torah but if it comes to his knowledge as we read now in Leviticus 4 then he repents so you you will see when you read the whole Leviticus 4 and I really implore you to rather before we go to the to the New Testament now maybe just stop the recording here and just read the whole um, chapter 4 of Leviticus to understand how God explains for every section of humanity when they sin in ignorance how the repentance and the sacrifices will work all right now we jump to Hebrews 10 in the New Testament Hebrews 10 from verse 26 but if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of truth there is no more sacrifice available for us so this is unfortunately, once you have heard the truth and you reject it, even if you want to plead cognitive dissonance or ignorance, if you know that it's against God's law to put a piece of bacon in your mouth, um, a, a piece of um, prawns, all these un, um, unkosher animals that we've discussed in detail over the last how many months, because God has a reason for that law. He's not just trying to be stupid or trying to be difficult. And he most definitely didn't give it only to the Jews. Even Noah, who wasn't a Jew thousands of years before the Jewish people, before the tribe of Judah, um, he even knew the difference between kosher and unkosher. So, we, so, so we're not going to go into detail with this. But for instance, if somebody told you already it's against God's law to eat pig, and you continue to eat pig. It's not me that says this. It's Paul in Hebrews 10. He says, there is no more sacrifice. So if people in the camp in, in Israel's time, if they continued sinning after they knew from Moses, when Moses explained to them what God gave him on the mountain, and they continued sinning, they couldn't come to the tabernacle with a, with a lamb because they've, they've done it willfully. They've done it in in rebellion so paul continues to say there's no more sacrifice for sins for you then but a certain fearful looking for the judgment and the fiery indignation which shall devour the enemies of god and then this is important you can even please take your highlighter hebrews 10 28 he or she even today in the modern age, he that despises the law of Moses died without mercy when there was two or three witnesses. So if somebody despised what Moses taught them about God's instructions and God's way of life and the light um, and the truth that he proclaimed to them that he received from Yahuwah, if somebody despised the law that Moses wrote down under God's instructions, he was he was killed. Um, that's that's how we saw throughout the whole Bible. If somebody murders another person and there's two or three witnesses, then he was stoned to death. That is the the penalty, and it's fair and it's just. And Yahuwah Himself is just. Um, and also, there's there's a I think it's Yeshua. Um, I don't have the verse now. I can't remember where it is. But even Yeshua says. Um, I will not witness against you one day. Moses will witness against you. They were speaking to the Pharisees. Although they were claiming that they were following Moses, they, they were twisting the Torah to fit them and to make them the leaders of the, um, of the Israelites, of the Jewish nation. And they were making their own laws, uh, the Talmud, and Yeshua said to them, at the end of the day, Moses is going to witness against you because you, you keep the letter of the law, 
but your heart is, is far from it. You make long prayers, but you don't treat the widows and the orphans well. You, you close the door to heaven for lots of people by all these man-made laws of yours. So when um, people despise the law of Moses, they died uh, without mercy. Because when you continue sinning in ignorance, in willful ignorance and rejection of the truth, then there is no more sacrifice for sin. There's only judgment and fiery indignation and there's no mercy. And that's a big problem because doesn't the whole church system today scream, I'm under mercy, I'm not under the law. And if you don't know the difference from being under the law and under mercy, um, just WhatsApp me on 082-893-3826. So I can send you um, the link to the YouTube channel where we discuss in detail what it means to be free from the law. Um, to, to be under mercy is to come out from under the judgment and the death penalty that is described in the law. It doesn't mean that you can now be under mercy and continue breaking that very same law. You're not out from under obedience of the law. You're only out from under the death penalty that is described in the law. So Yahweh is patient, very patient. He did not end the world yet. He is still calling and, and people must hear him calling. He's still trying to teach them the, the way of life, the truth. And Yeshua himself said, I came to teach you my father's law, to show you how to really do it with fulfillment. Not just with your hands and your heart is still sinning. Not just saying you don't sleep around, but in your heart you are looking at a woman with lust. There's there is a spiritual and a physical application of every one of the laws. Um, but Yahuwah is patient. And, and even now with people still being ignorant and people still not having the knowledge, he is patient. Look at how Paul describes this beautifully. Romans 2 verse 4. Despise you the richness and the goodness and the forbearance and the long suffering of Yahuwah. Don't you know that the goodness of Yahuwah leads you to repentance? But it's the hardness and the impenitent heart that you treasure up for yourself wrath and judgment in the day of judgment. All right. Basically, God could have killed this whole humanity long time ago because we all of us are in transgression of him. All of us are, have sinned and, and um, um, what is the word I'm looking for? We deserve the death penalty. And a lot of people are sinning against him in rebellion and they ignore him. They, for instance, choose to believe in evolution. But they can see the sun comes up every day. How the hell could that sun just pop up out of a big bang billions of years ago? So there are lots of people being willfully ignorant and that they choose to look at the so-called scientific facts on their side. And then they just say, oh, well, ignorance is bliss. I don't believe in God. I don't have to follow any instructions from any God because there was a big bang billions of years ago, the scientists are saying. That's ignorance. And the hardness of their heart will, in the day of judgment, um, bring upon them what they deserve. They, there will be no more sacrifice for them to bring. The, the sacrifice of... Jesus Christ on the cross is not going to save them and um, bring them into heaven. A lot of people are claiming that. But how can you claim the death of the sacrificial lamb when the sin that you are doing is not yet under that blood? Because the only way that you can really be saved from death is if your sin is covered with the blood and not witnessing against you anymore. And God is still patient. He's still the time we are living in now. We, people must stop saying, um, when is God coming back? When is God, when is Jesus coming back? He must come back tomorrow. He's got a specific plan in his prophecies laid out. He's not coming back tomorrow. There are certain things, lots of things that still has to happen. But in the meantime, 
Other people can be laughing and say, oh, you waiting for God to come back. Where is he? The same happened in the day of Paul. And that's why he says to the Romans, stop saying that. Because don't you understand that, that God's patience is he's trying to bring you to repentance. He's trying to get you out of your ignorance. He's trying to give you the, the knowledge of the truth so that you can repent and return back to him. Of course, everyone is always claiming that God is going to be unfair when he judges people that really was ignorant, that really didn't know, or that didn't even hear his voice when he was calling them. They never read the Torah, and nobody ever warned them or told them about this way of life. But that is not what the God that we serve is like. God is not going to be an unfair judge one day against people that are ignorant, that don't know that they are sinning. All right? Go to Acts 17 verse 30. The times of this ignorance God winks at, but now he commands all men everywhere to repent. This is in the book of Acts already. And this has never stopped since then to now. God is winking. It's, it's not that he's going to forget the times of ignorance. It's like he is winking at it. He understands it. He knows everyone's hearts. He knows he's going to, on judgment day, he's going to know the people that were willfully ignorant and the people that were really um, without knowledge and understanding. And he will judge accordingly. So the times of ignorance God winks at, it's not that he is unaware or that is that he's going to be unfair in his judgment one day. He knows the times of ignorance. But, Acts 17 verse 30, but now he commands men everywhere to repent. The same in our days. God winks at ignorance. That person that maybe sits there somewhere on an island that doesn't know about the Torah. God knows that he doesn't know. But where we are, everyone has at some point in his life heard about the fact that we have to be obedient to God. And God commands that people repent from now not, be, not being obedient. Because when you hear and you don't repent, God is not going to wink at the times of ignorance. Why? Why does he wink or overlook the times of ignorance? We first of all, um, Romans 2 verse 4, he wants all men to be saved, if you read Romans 2 verse 4. And secondly, Acts 17 verse 27, they, all the pagan nations, should seek Yahuwah, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he is not far from every, from every one of us on earth. So Acts 17 verse 27 says, not only for Israel, God is also speaking and reaching out to every person all over the world, in every nation. Because the house of Ephraim, of Joseph, of Israel, is the lost sheep that is scattered into all the nations. So out of all the nations, people must seek Yahuwah. Even if a person in another nation or another religion, if he really seeks the one that created him, even if he doesn't know him. We've heard so many testimonies of people in other religions um, that has turned to Yahuwah, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, because they were really looking for him. And although they are indoctrinated their whole life that their God is some, someone else with another name, it doesn't matter. If, you, if somebody really looks for their creator and they want to have a relationship, God has a way to reach them. He will have a way to bring the truth to them. Um, even if you can just remember Abraham. Abraham was in a pagan nation. Abraham was uh, worshipping other gods. His father was a priest in a pagan uh, temple. His father was working directly under Nimrod. We've, uh, we've looked at all the studies in the book of Genesis. Uh, but, but Abraham was looking for the true God. And God will never leave anyone hanging. Doesn't matter in which religion, culture, tribe, nation. Doesn't matter. 
If you're looking for him, he promises all over his word. And he's not a man that he can lie. He promises that he will answer the um, amount in which you search for him. He will answer that. And you can use this when you pray for people. Use these verses and, and pray for people that are looking for God. Even if they are still worshipping him, thinking they are worshipping their God, but it's actually a, an idol. Pray for them that they will continue to search like Abraham for the real, true, living God. And God somehow will answer them. I've been part of Open Doors many years ago. And there were hundreds and thousands of miracles and stories and testimonies. The one guy, um, it was in a Chinese prison. And you know, this, this guy was um, taken into prison and I, I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but he wanted to know the truth. Um, and he was praying for, for somehow that he can get to know the truth. But he was locked up in prison the whole day. And then at one stage, he was given a job to clean the officer's toilets. All right? <laughs> it's a beautiful story. It, it, it's actually amazing. And he started cleaning the officer's toilets. That was the job that he got. And he, it wasn't a nice job because... They, they wasn't running toilets and stuff. They, everything was in buckets. And as he was cleaning the buckets out, there was pieces of paper that the officers, the Chinese officers, the communists, were using to wipe their butts with, right? There wasn't toilet paper. It was, it was pieces of paper. And when he, when he um, started throwing away the stuff, he saw that this, there was something written on the paper. And, and then he, he, he took it out from between the um, excrement and he cleaned it and he saw it was a piece of a paper, um, a page of the Bible. And then he started reading it and he, and he got to the truth of the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Because every day as he cleaned the toilets of the officers, there was all these pieces of papers, all these pages of the Bible that these communist officers was using, um, tearing it out of the Bible to wipe their asses with when they went to the toilet. And this guy, who was praying to know the truth, was actually given a very disgusting job. But it was God's way of giving him the opportunity to find the truth. And he gathered all those pieces of paper and he cleaned them up and he had so many pages of the Bible. God has a way to answer anyone that is looking for the truth. Um, Acts 14 verse 16. God who in times past. Has allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. Now is calling them to return to him. Can you see Acts 14 verse 16. Acts 17 verse 30. Acts 17 verse 27. Beautiful. How all these verses are taking us back to Vayikra, to Leviticus. God is calling all men to return to him. He allowed them in times past. He was winking at times of ignorance. People didn't know about him, but now he commands people to come back to him. He's calling people, Vayikra, men, to return to him. And that's why we discussed the book of Leviticus, to see how he's calling his people out of every tribe, nation and tongue. Luke 24, 47, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in Yeshua's name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. From Jerusalem, the, the truth and the gospel and the salvation under repentance and the blood of Messiah is preached among all nations. And therefore God calls all nations to return to him. And therefore God allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. But now he calls them. And he says people should seek Yahuwah. Acts 17, 27. Seek him and, and you will find him. He, this is a promise. He says he's not far from anyone. Not from a communist in China. Not from, I, I don't want to say all the names. You know what I'm talking about. All the various other religions there is. God is not far from anyone. Nobody can claim real ignorance at the end of the day. Because every person, even the atheists, 
deep down inside, they know there is a God that created everything. The Big Bang cannot create, if you just look at how your hand works, you can, you can make a fist out of your five fingers. There are bones and muscles and tendons. And the only thing you need to do is to think about making a fist with your hand. And your hand is making a fist. How, how can that just fall out of the sky one day something, something out of nothing exploded? And today we've got millions of species of animals and, and trees and plants and water. I mean, for heaven's sakes, I'm not even going to spend the time to discuss this. Romans 2.12 For as many as sinned without the law shall perish without the law. So now, now we get to the difficult part where God, God will be accused of being an unfair judge. We've just re read how he understands ignorance, how almost like he, he allowed it, but now he's calling people. And it's not only now in 2021. Now he's calling people has been since the Garden of Eden. God has never stopped calling people. How many people from pagan nations came into the, into the nation of Israel? So, so God has never stopped calling. God can never, Yahuwah can never be accused of being unfair. But as many as sin, Romans 2, 12, without the law will be killed without the law. So God will not necessarily, and, and you can, each one of you can decide how you understand it. You don't have to agree with me. The way I understand it is that if, for instance, uh, let me not try and make it difficult. If you come to a country where the law says it's illegal to um, say the word blue, all right, and you come into that country, but you didn't know it was illegal to say the word blue, surely the officer or the judge or the police, the first time you say blue and you didn't know that it was against the law, they're not going to take you to the... Um, to prison and kill you immediately, right? They, they will give you the warning. Okay, remember now, don't do it again. It's against the law. Don't say the word blue. And then if they find you saying the word blue again, then of course they're going to take you to prison and kill you, if, uh, if that's what the law says. Because no human being can be expected to be judged against the law if he didn't know about it. So people that didn't... Um, have the Torah, will perish without the Torah. Not even going into the deep mystery of saying that, that they will perish without Yeshua, who is the Torah that came to flesh. But they, they will be judged and they will be, um, because remember, judgment at the end of the day is um, destruction. If you do the Two Trees Bible study, what happens when we die? Then judgment and God's judgment is destruction, it's death. It's eternal death at the end of the day. So those who, per those who sin without the Torah will be judged and will die and will perish without the Torah. God cannot, and, and he's not an unfair judge and he's not an idiot. He's not going to judge people to say, it was against my law to say the word blue. But you said the word blue, therefore I'm going to kill you. This is not who our God is. He will know how to judge each person against um, their own consciousness and, um, and for the work that they have done. We looked at this before. Um, he will judge and, and he will reward everybody according to their works and he will judge everybody according to their works. So the, the Torah cannot be held against somebody when he sinned in ignorance. That is what the book of Leviticus is teaching us. It's only when you then receive the knowledge of the truth that the Torah becomes your standard of judgment. So Paul continues. Um, he says, as many as sinned without Torah shall perish without Torah. And as many as sinned in the Torah shall be, look at your Bible, so that you can see how this God is going to judge. What does your Bible say? As many as sinned in the Torah shall be judged by the Torah. So everyone that knew the Bible, that knew we had to be obedient to God, 
even if they were ignorant. And they said, but I thought I don't have to be obedient. I thought I was under grace, therefore I could break the Torah. I can put a piece of bacon on Christmas and on a Sunday and bow before the Christmas tree and do Ishtar and um, not worry about coming into God's Torah commandments. I didn't have to do the feasts of God. I didn't know. But he had the Torah. He had it in his Bible. Maybe a lot of people told him about it. And he read it himself. But he was willfully ignorant. Cognitive dissonance. He decided not to take the knowledge. If he sinned in the Torah, he will be judged by the Torah. Because Paul continues, he says, not the hearers of the Torah will be righteous in the sight of Elohim, but the doers of the Torah shall be declared right. I know, I know, I know, the world religious system screams at you. The Torah cannot save you. I disagree. The Torah that became flesh is our salvation. And when we repent of breaking the Torah and we start doing the Torah, God, through Paul, through Paul, the very same man that the church uses to scream at us, through Paul, he says, the doers of my instructions, those people that do my instructions because they love me and they respect me and they want to travel with me through the wilderness into the promised land and go in through one of the 12 doors of the house of Israel, they will be declared right. Not saved, saved from, from um, the angel of death. Israel wasn't saved from the angel of death by doing the Torah. They were saved because when Moses said, God said, kill the lamb and put the blood on the doorposts. It was the blood that saved them. But yet they had to obey. They had to obey the calling to come under the blood, isn't it? The doers of the Torah shall be declared right. We, we are saved from Egypt, from the, from the death penalty. We come out from Egypt and now we start doing the Torah and we are declared right before God and we come into his presence and we come close to the tabernacle and we learn about serving him. By the time you, you want to serve him and you understand all four of the covenants, you want to do the Torah. The Torah is beautiful. The Torah teaches everything about Messiah. Now, Romans 2 verse 14. This is, the, this is the important one for me. Because this explains and proves to me that God is not unfair. Romans 2 verse 14. When the nations that does not have the Torah, when they by their own nature, by their own character, in the, the, the nature that's inborn in every human being, when they by nature do what is in the Torah, although they don't have the Torah, they are a Torah to themselves. What does that mean? Basically, that man that lives on an island somewhere that never had the Torah, never read it, but every human being knows that it's wrong to kill, to murder, to steal, um, to rape, and to... Um, hurt other people so when when the nations the the unbelievers or the people that don't know about the god of abraham when they do by nature what is good because the torah is good when they by their own nature do good then they are a torah to themselves so on judgment day they will be judged according to their works god is not going to to take the Torah and, and um, push it into their face and say, oh, you didn't follow my Torah, therefore you're going to go to hell. This is maybe what the world is teaching, but this is not what God is or who God is. The, the, the conscience will be the standard against what they, how they will be judged. So I continue, Romans 2 verse uh, 15. These nations who show the work of the Torah written in their hearts. 
So not only Israel has the Torah written in their hearts, even the pagan nations. Like I said, they know it's wrong to murder, rape and steal. The Torah is written on their hearts. It's written in their conscience. They know. So these nations who show the work of the Torah written in their hearts and their conscience bearing witness. So everyone that steals, their conscience is witnessing against them that it's wrong. They know it's wrong. They don't even need the Torah to tell them that it's wrong. They know it's wrong. God has put the Torah in everyone's hearts. That's what God says. This is the God we serve. So let's continue. So um, the nations who show the work of the Torah written in their hearts, their conscience bearing witness, and between themselves, their thoughts accuses or excuse. Again, you can decide what you believe. Okay, the way I understand it. When they do the work of the Torah, although they don't know the Torah, because the Torah is in their nature, they, they, they don't go against their own conscience, and their own conscience is accusing them or excusing them. Continue with verse 16. Accusing them or excusing them in the day when Elohim will judge the secret thoughts of men through Yeshua. So everyone that will stand before God in judgment. Those who knew the Torah will be judged according to the Torah and will be judged by the Torah and Moses will be witness against them. And they will other, there will be two or three witnesses against them. God is not unfair. Those who didn't know the Torah, but lived according to the Torah written in their hearts, um, lived among uh, or, or, or lived with the natural law, understanding and accepting the natural law and not going around killing people, even if they live on an island, they, they know it's wrong to kill. Those people will be judged according the, to their conscience, according to the Torah that works through their conscience in their hearts. All right. In that day when Elohim judge people, he will judge them according to this. So God is a fair judge. He's a clever judge. He understands the secret thoughts of men. So nobody is going to be able to claim ignorance on the day of judgment. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um... We will have to continue. Let me quickly finish. There's only two verses left. Uh, as I know the time is long, but let me quickly continues, uh, continue. Jeremiah 17 verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things, and the heart is beyond cure. Who can understand it? Yahuwah searches the heart. I, Yahuwah, examine the mind, and I will reward a man according to his ways. I will judge him by what his deeds deserve. Beautiful. This explains and confirms everything we've said this far. Leviticus 4 verse 2, with which we started, remember, speak to the children of Israel and say, when a man sins by mistake or by ignorance against any of the commandments of Yahuwah, then he has to bring an offering to the temple. He must kill it on the north side. Ah, remember, the left-hand side, the goat side, the enemy side, the killing side of the tabernacle. When he sinned in ignorance, he must bring an offering to the temple, kill it on the north side. He must repent. He must cry. Read Leviticus 4. He must kill the animal, ask forgiveness. And then under the blood of that animal, he can move over to the right-hand side of God. All this is done by Yeshua, in Yeshua, and through Yeshua. But without understanding and obeying the Torah, we don't even understand how Yeshua can bring us from the north side, from the left side, to the right side. And one day people are going to claim ignorance, and then even Yeshua will be witness against them. If you deny me before men, I will deny you before the Father and the holy angels. Leviticus 4.2 Speak to the children of Israel when a being sins by mistake against any of the commandments of Yahuwah. Then the priest will make atonement for his sin that he has sinned and it shall be forgiven him. 
This last piece comes from Leviticus 4 verse 35. So I take Leviticus 4 verse 2. If we sin in ignorance and we go through this whole repentance process, then we end with Leviticus 4 verse 35. It shall be forgiven.